You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. The Giants are still trying to find ways to add talented players to this roster, and they hosted veteran DB Joshua Kalua on a visit slash workout today. We'll tell you if they're going to sign him, should they sign him, and what kind of player he is, as he does have ties to new defensive coordinator Shane Bowen. We'll also react to pro football focus, saying that Andrew Thomas is not a top 10 tackle in the NFL. Crazy. But first, if you're ready for the NFL season to start, if you're ready to spend your Sundays watching the Giants, hopefully get some wins this season. Hit that thumbs up icon for me right now. The New York Giants hosted Joshua Kalu on a free agency visit. They have a need at the DB position. He's played corner and he's played safety in his NFL career, but really his claim to fame is his ability to produce on special teams. Remember four years ago when the Tennessee Titans had that blocked field goal against the Kansas City Chiefs to win that game? That was Joshua Kalu, and he's made a lot of big plays on special teams. He was an undrafted free agent back in 2018 coming out of Nebraska. He was with the Tennessee Titans from 2018 to 2020. Did not play in the NFL in a game in 2021. Was back with the Titans in 2022. And this past year, he spent time with the Washington Commanders as well as the Miami Dolphins. Go back to 2021, though, in the spring, he was actually on the Giants roster in March. Did not go through the whole summer with them. Did not make the roster. But he's circling the block back, hopefully, to get a contract this time after this visit. He's appeared in 48 career games in his NFL journey, and he's got five starts so far. He's 28 years old, six foot, 203 pounds. Last time he played in the NFL was 2022, where he had 42 tackles, one tackle for loss, five pass breakups, and one interception. And that was really the season that he got the most work. That was when he got the most snaps. And you like to say when a player gets that amount of opportunities, they produce, and he did that. That's why he had a career year in 2022, 42 tackles, five PBUs. Didn't play all that much in the prior three seasons, only 16 tackles in 2020, six in 2019, and four in 2018. You look at his PFF grades for 2019, 2020, and 2022. The thing that stuck out to me was how well PFF graded him as a tackler. He has just four career missed tackles. So when he has an opportunity, when he sees something and trusts his eyes and gets downhill, he can make plays inside the box in that big slot position, and he can be a DB on the field that can help you and run support. And as we know, Shane Bowen wants to run a defense with a lot of DBs on the field. He ran the dime package in personnel, the second highest rate in the NFL last year at about 24%. And the fact that he has spent his entire career on a team that was coached by Shane Bowen, whether he was the linebacker coach or the defensive coordinator, he's at, got to at least get to know him, has a relationship with him, and he knows how Kalu plays. He can line up anywhere on the defense, really. He has 98 career snaps inside the box, 267 at free safety, probably the position he's played the most. He's also got 218 snaps, though, in the slot. So he can be that big, strong, physical slot corner and give you some run support. Only 33 snaps, though as that boundary corner. But like we talked about at the top of the video, special teams is where he's going to earn his paycheck at this point in the NFL. And he's got a lot of work there so far through his career. 694 total special team snaps. Grades by year for pro football focus include 72, 62, 81, and 63. He's got 144 kick return snaps 224 kick coverage snaps, 95 punt return snaps, 72 punt coverage, and 159 snaps on field goal blocks. He does have one field goal block, a game-winning field goal block against the Kansas City Chiefs four seasons ago, but he, um, he's got a lot of juice to give a team, in my opinion, on special teams, and maybe he could help out this safety room, at least for some competition purposes through the offseason in a training camp, and maybe if he shows that he continues to be a good fit in Shane Bowen's defense. He could be a part of the 53-man roster. You got Jason Pinnock, Dane Belton, probably going to be your starting two safeties early on in the season. You know, Tyler Newbin, the second-round pick out of Minnesota, is going to be pushing to get on the field pretty soon. You already signed a veteran in the early part of free agency in Jalen Mills, and you got Javarius Owens, the seventh-round pick from U of H in the 2023 class. 
I wanted to show just the corner depth chart as well because he does have um, 218 career snaps in the slot. Maybe the Giants feel like he could play there on rundowns or something like that. But uh, I think if he's got any chance to make this roster, it will be as a safety, and it will be because what he can provide as a special team specialist. If Kalu is signed, which is honestly something I would do at this point, I think you need another safety to go through camp. You really only have four on the roster that have proven are – that's not fair. So you have five on the roster at the safety position. So you could add another. You can go three teams on defense and two deep at each spot, and we know that Bowen likes to operate with multiple safeties on the field. I would sign him, but if he does get signed, he's still competing for a roster spot. He's going to have to go through training camp as well as uh, the preseason, produce in preseason, and try to make this team – Long shot, I would say, if he does get signed to make the roster, but he hasn't even been signed yet. But I want to talk about it because that's what we do here on the channel. When news or rumors come out about the Giants, we get you guys a video. And when they host players on workouts at this point in the offseason, that means a signing could come. And I want to familiarize all the real ones with that player before anybody else does. That's why you subscribe. Free, informative, entertaining videos every single day. Coming up next, i got a bone to pick with the boys and girls over at Pro Football Focus. They put out a list of the top 10 tackles in the NFL, and somehow Andrew Thomas was not included. Somebody make it make sense, because it's going to get ugly in the second part of, that, of this video. Make sure you are uh, going to have your Brian Burns jersey ready to go for week one of the 2024 season. Go to chatsports.com slash Burns. Pick up your new Brian Burns, Jersey, $150 million pass rusher. I'm predicting double-digit sacks this season. He's rocking number zero, maybe the last time. Hopefully, he know, uh, someone wears number zero on the Giants. Chatsports.com slash Burns. That is chatsports.com slash Burns. All right, at PFF, they released an article where they or put an order and ranked the top tackles in the NFL. And Andrew Thomas was ranked as the 11th best tackle, which is an awesome honor. It is, and he deserves it thing is he deserves a little bit more recognition and he deserves to be included inside the top 10 where PFF did not put him here was the top 10 that they created Trent Williams number one no problem with that always going to respect the OG one of the best offensive tackles to ever lace him up Tristan Wirfs is a really good player as well Penny Sewell is good Christian Darisau is also a really good player all of these guys that are on this list are good players but I'm sorry Jordan Mailata Lane Johnson, Tyron Smith, and Colton Miller are not better than Andrew Thomas. And what, it is 2025 in seven months, and we're saying Lane, Tom, Lane Johnson and Tyron Smith are better than Andrew Thomas. It's a joke. And the reason that Pro Football Focus gave for Andrew Thomas not being top 10 is because of injuries. Do they know anything about Tyron Smith? He's the most injured offensive lineman in the year, it feels like, every single season. This was their full write-up on why he deserved to be the 11th ranked offensive tackle. Another player whose 2023 season was impacted by injuries. Thomas was unable to replicate his terrific 2022 season as he played a career low 576 snaps last year. That first quote doesn't make any sense. He wasn't able to replicate his awesome year. Are they strictly talking um, snaps because the stats were still pretty Dang good. However, his 90.3 overall grade in 2022 ranked third at the position, and he finished in the top 10 in pass blocking grade last year, talking about 2023, even though it was relatively a down year for the Giants tackle. A down year for the tackle, but he was still a top 10 overall pass blocking grade recipient from your website. I know it's May and almost June. And the way for people to click on your articles is probably to upset large fan bases like the New York Giants. But come on, at least come up with better reasoning, guys. You already admitted he's top 10. He's actually number nine in pass blocking grade if you filter out 20% of the snaps. So he's top nine in that. And he was number three overall the year before. But because he missed seven games in one injured season, he's not that guy anymore? It's a ridiculous list. This is a ridiculous list this is the type of stuff that makes pro people not like the the thought pieces that pff puts out i love pff i love the stats i love the breakdowns i appreciate the work they put in and and they're friends of the program we like them here we love them here chat sports they've been on our stuff uh, and we well, some more guys have been on their stuff but i gotta do what i gotta do 
And if you don't think Andrew Thomas is a top 10 tackle in the NFL, pass me what you're smoking because that dope's got to be doping, man, because it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Are you kidding me? The guy has allowed nine sacks in 10, 26, 39. He's allowed nine sacks in his last 39 games. I'd say that's a pretty good job. I'd say that's top 10 worthy. But, you know, I, I'm just a YouTuber. Seven quarterback hits in the last three seasons. Definitely not a top 10 tackle. Let's at least just go by the criteria that Pro Football Focus made this list off of. Their own grades. Andrew Thomas was the ninth best pass blocking tackle in 2023, but not top 10 in their eyes. The year before, top three in overall grade, but not top 10 going into 2024. We got guys like Tyron Smith and Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata and Colton Miller in the great year of 2024, ranked above Andrew Thomas. This is an embarrassing list. It, this, is, this is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Maybe I'm overhyping our guy. I do that from time to time. Educate me. Andrew Thomas is a top blank offensive tackle in the NFL. I want to hear from you in the comment section. He's top five and he ain't five. He is. The only tackle that I can say without a doubt is better than him. As I relook at this list, Trent Williams. I don't see any others. I don't see any others. I'll always respect the OGs. Are we for sure saying Tristan Wirfs is better than Andrew Thomas? Sewell, Sewell can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. I got a top three, it's William Sewell, and, and it's Thomas. I can promise you this. Lane Johnson and Tyron Smith, who have stacked some injuries recently, being where they are, and Andrew Thomas is not because of injuries? Wow. Make sure to hit me up on Instagram, Twitter. I'm at Marshall Green underscore. PFF, if you want to talk about it, hit my line.